In this example, we're going to do an independent sample t-test. We have data here for a control group and an experimental group. The first thing we can do is get the descriptive statistics that we would report. So we'd want to say what the mean standard deviation was of the control group. To do that, similar to last time, we'd take our equal sign to say that we're going to use a function, type in average to get the mean, and then we'd put the array that our data is stored in, which is B2 through B9. That would be our average for the first group. We can take that and copy it, paste it over into the other column for the experimental group, and we have our mean for that group. Then we can get the standard deviation, again say, using the equal sign saying that we're going to use a function. We use a standard deviation function and then select our array where the data is stored, which is B2 through B9. And that would be our standard deviation. Again, we copy it, paste it, and we have our mean and standard deviation for the control and experimental groups. Now, one way you can get the degrees of freedom is to count the number of observations you have within a condition. Now, you can do this by hand but if you want to use a function in Excel to do it, you can say equal count, and then you put in the array again that you're interested in, B2 through B9. And that will give the number of observations within that range. And then you're going to add, in this case to get the degrees of freedom for an independent sample t-test, we're going to add the number of observations in the control group, so we can do the same thing, count C2, through C9, and we're going to subtract 2 because the degrees of freedom for the independent sample t-test would be N1 plus N2 minus 2, and that gives us 14 degrees of freedom. Now, if you use the t-test function in Excel, you're actually going to get the probability of a type 1 error, so it's the p-value. It's what you would get on a printout in something like SPSS. It's similar to what we're doing looking at a critical value when we did the analyses by hand. For the t-test, you put in the two arrays you're interested in comparing. So again, we have B2 through B9 and C2 through C9. And then you have to say what kind of test you're going to do, how many tails you're going to run. And we'll do a two-tail t-test like we've done most of the time. And the type refers to one, a paired sample t-test, which we do not have in this case. Two, a two sample t-test in which the variances are equivalent. And three, as the other option would be a two sample t-test where the variances are not equivalent. We're going to assume equivalence of variance and put a two in for that option. And that gives us the probability of making a type one error. However, to get the actual t value that we'd want to report in our results, we need to do something else. We need to use a t inverse function, which in this case will take the probability that we just calculated in B15 and the degrees of freedom that we did a little bit earlier that were in B13. And we find that the t value is 3.55. So our t-test turns out with 14 degrees of freedom is equal to 3.55 with a probability of a type 1 error being less than 0 0.01.